The Yellow Boost Centauri Carbon launched at a price tag of $299, which a lot of people consider to be the best budget core XY 3D printer on the market. For a while now, I think it's actually been a pretty good deal myself. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna discuss, should you buy the Elegoo Centauri Carbon? Now, what we're gonna do is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna make the argument for purchasing this 3D printer, and I'm gonna go on the other side and try to dissuade you from buying the 3D printer. I think it'll be kind of interesting to come up with my arguments for and against. You'll see what outweighs what. You can make your own personal opinion on this. Now, this is not gonna be a full review of the 3D printer. I do actually have some of those up on the channel as well as there's tons of them already on YouTube. But if you want to see a full review again, um, I'm at 480 hours, so I could do a 500 plus hour review. If you guys want to see that, comment down below. And in no way am I being paid to make this video. I'm going to actually try to make some very critical points about the 3D printer. I purchased this myself. I was in the first batch. Um, so take that as you will, guys. I think it will be an interesting perspective on the 3D printer. So let's go ahead and get into it. So getting into my arguments for, you're getting a lot when it comes to the Elegoose Centauri Carbon for $299. You know, you got a solid die cast frame on the 3D printer. You're actually getting some glass doors on top and on the bottom. And what else can you ask for? It's built like a tank is what I feel like. I saw a video where they were flying it up in the air and it still came out with a successful 3D print. You can make Lego blasters. You can make full on life-size droid projects where I printed at least half of my droid on this Centauri Carbon. Again, just reiterate, it's $299. I think that's one of like the main selling points of this 3D printer. It is $299. I can buy two or even three or even four printers for the same price of one X1 Carbon. Um, you know, if I'm looking at the P1S, I can buy two of these and still have some money left over for filament. It can really do anything, right? You're at a 256 by 256 by 256 build plate. It's taking minimal tuning even to print something like this. I, I haven't really done much. The only thing I've done is to change like the bed temperature, the stock profiles. You can use Orca on it. So you're not really restricted as far as what you can use to slice files. You have Orca, you have the Elegoo Slicer, which is just a carbon copy of Orca. You know, we have a camera where we can monitor our 3D prints. Elegoo has been consistently like updating you in the Reddit as well. So they've, they've added things such as an LED light bar, which I don't have that on mine, which I greatly appreciate Elegoo listening to actual community feedback and producing a better product. Yeah, do I get that? No, does it kind of suck? Yes, but you know, at the end of the day, they're listening to the community. They're making updates to their 3D printer. So we're getting an LED light bar up in here to improve the camera quality and improve the lighting because you know the little bead light wasn't very good. Um, the other thing that they're also upgrading is they have the multicolored port for the on the back now. So that way you don't have to DIY anything. They've actually added the multicolored port to the back for the 3D printer. The printer is faster than a bed slinger and it works. You know, it's very easy to set up you know, one time setup of 45 minutes and you're completely done. You don't have to run that again. It also has the spool holder here on the side, which is a great added benefit to those that have used like, you know, on the P1S, it's in the back or any other printer, even the Cobra S1, that, that spool holder being in the back is terrible. I've also been able to print helmets like this size where they're already broken up. Uh, this is my terrible paint job. I ignore that I dropped it. But outside of that, it's been a very good 3D printer. And did I mention it's $299. It is also fully enclosed, so you have the opportunity to print your ABS, your ASA, at a very low price tag of $299. If your next best option is like the Cobra S1, that's over $400. And this one is regular price. Again, did I mention it's $299? What if they run a sale? That would be crazy. You might be able to get it for even cheaper. Now, I wouldn't hold out on that, but you never know. There's also been a lot of community support you know, for this 3D printer. With it being so cheap, it's widely popular. I think it could become the new Ender 3. So with that being said, I just see a ton of mods coming out for this 3D printer and the future of it, I think is extremely bright. Also customer support has been extremely good. Anytime I reach out, they've answered my response within 24 hours, as long as it's not on the weekend. But with that being said, I, I think it's a great buy. I think you should purchase this 3D printer. Now, let me just add before I get into like my, my argument against here, I probably forgot stuff, guys. Sometimes it's hard for me to like manage all the thoughts in my brain, but you know, this is really just in good fun, trying to help you decide uh, what you want. And again, leave a comment down below if you have any questions specifically. So let's go ahead and get into my argument again. Elegoo is just pushing uh, cheap materials, cheap stuff, right? 
Even myself, I had a nozzle that lasted about 300 hours and then it took me a month to get a replacement. The replacement shipped from China, it wasn't readily available in their warehouse. I still can't purchase parts on their website. So if I want a new nozzle at this point, I do have to wait and pre-order it. And right now the pre-order date for just a simple 0.4 nozzle isn't until August. And honestly, at this point, if you're pre-ordering the printer, you're not gonna get it till August. So you might wanna wait and see what the M1 Pro looks like. Um, is that printer going to be reliable? Honestly, we have no idea, but it might be worth a look. But you are then also sitting here waiting around and you're not being able to 3D print. You know, it still doesn't have multicolored functionality. So if that's something you want, you don't have it with this 3D printer. This 3D printer did also launch with a lot of software issues and more and more people are reporting issues with it because more and more people are getting this in their hands. So is it really worth it if you're not having that reliability of a Bamboo Lab printer and if you can't readily order parts and just have extra parts in stock? Print quality is subjective and it is all usually opinion based, but I think I might be able to get better prints on my Bamboo Lab A1. It might take a little bit longer and there's less tuning, but at the end of the day, I still do think Bamboo Lab printers have a little better print quality. I can't monitor my prints remotely without actually getting like a Raspberry Pi and doing that and setting it up. So that's another extra cost to this 3D printer that I think should be included with the printer. You know, Bamboo Lab has their handy app. Um, even the Anycubic has their app. Like why can't Elegoo offer an app? Now I get it. I can look at it from my phone while I'm at home, but what if I'm at work? If I have a spaghetti mess, I just kind of got to leave it and it's going to become a bigger issue. Now, the noise on this 3D printer is absolutely insane. I think this is the loudest 3D printer. And if you wanted to use it to sound the alarm in your neighborhood and have a tornado warning, uh, you could probably just use this 3D printer because it's that loud. All jokes aside, guys, I actually think this is a pretty good 3D printer and I would recommend picking it up um, for someone who doesn't have a 3D printer, maybe you're looking to add a second 3D printer to your arsenal. Um, if you're starting a 3D print farm, I don't necessarily think I would recommend it in that case, right? Because you do want to have parts available to you and you're really printing in bulk and there's a lot of unknowns with this 3D printer. Like when we're hitting a thousand hours and stuff, is it going to continue to hold up? I don't know, but it is so cheap that maybe it's worth the risk. Um, with some of those situations, but I do think it's a very good beginner 3D printer. You know, for the most part, it does just work. You're, every single 3D print company is going to have printers that out of the box, you're gonna have some issues. I think Elgoo has done a really good job fine tuning that. Maybe not necessarily fine tuning, but I think they've listened to the community feedback and they fixed a lot of issues like the light. Um, I've seen a lot of updates to the 3D printer. They've added the multicolored port to the back. There's even more that I'm sure I'm missing. Uh, but you can check out their Facebook page and all of that for those updates. I mean, it's, it's again, I was joking around with it being $2.99, you know, to kind of make it like a funny thing, but it is $2.99 at the end of the day. And I think if you work with Elgo Sport and you're willing to battle through some of that stuff where, you know, it did take me a month to get a replacement nozzle. I think if you're willing to deal with some of that for the price, right? And that's kind of what comes with the territory. You're buying a cheaper 3D printer. But I do think Elgoo will take care of you at the end of the day. It seems like they're very customer forward and centric. Um, so they, they, they're going to rely on good experiences with these cheap products. Is this like some sort of innovative, like new 3D printer? There's all this new stuff. No, they did add the spool holder to the side. And you can hear that car going through my neighborhood. That's crazy obnoxious. But anyway, maybe you didn't. Uh, but with that being said, guys, they're not they're not being innovative or, or really bringing anything new to the table. So they're giving you kind of a clone of what is already out there. If you want something innovative, you know, you got to look at Bamboo Lab, the H2D, maybe some of the Prusa stuff with the multi, dip, the different nozzles and the nozzle changers, right? You're going to pay for that stuff. Elgu is giving you what they know works, what has worked with other printers over time. And at 299, it's a good pickup. Now, would I maybe wait until this is actually in stock and readily available? Yeah, at this point, I think I would because then you're guaranteeing you're getting all the new updates they're gonna come out with once they actually ship all their pre-orders to everybody. At the same time, you know, if you're wanting to print today, there are other 3D print options. I think even if you live next to a micro center, you're able to get some of these newer uh, Centauri Carbons. It's like an upcharge of like $25, but $25 to print for the next three months versus waiting for a pre-order to come in stock, I think is worth it. 
Um, so, you know, you got to make the best decision for yourself. If you have any questions about the Illigoo Centauri Carbon, please comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Again, I have a first batch printer. They've done a lot of updates. I think it's great that they're listening to the community. And again, this was just a fun video because uh, I do get asked all the time, would you recommend the Illigoo Centauri Carbon? But with that being said, guys, let me know what kind of videos you want to see next. I appreciate you watching. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and have a good rest of your day.